welcome back to another episode of Positive Vibes. So today I am coming to you um, just, it's not a Bible study. I'm not going to be doing a Bible study today. Today I just kind of want to talk. I kind of just want to, um, I want to give a testimony and also just seeing where you guys are and, and you know, just kind of tell you what's been going on with my life. Um, so today is not a Bible study, but we are so definitely still going to be giving God all the glory. So I just want to thank you guys so much for joining me here today. You may hear Nyla in the background because she's right in the living room, but um, I thank you guys so much for joining me today. And if this is your first time um, here on Positive Vibes, welcome. We talk about all issues, every issues that um, we face on a daily basis as women, as moms, as wives, um, as daughters, as entrepreneurs, as believers. And if you fit the bill, then this is the place for you. We are authentic. We don't sugarcoat anything. And um, just want you to be who God wants you to be and enjoy your life. So if this is your first time here, I would love for you to consider um, subscribing to our channel and also hit that bell so that you will get all the no notifications when I do upload um, videos. Technically, I do upload every Thursdays um, is what I'm striving for. <laughs> Some Thursdays, I completely miss it, but um, it's real life. I am a wife, a mom, an entrepreneur, a believer, a minister, a daughter, a sister, a friend, and my life is wild, okay? So, as I'm pretty sure every mama's life out there right now is kind of just turned upside down. So, join us, subscribe to our channel, and give this video a thumbs up. And also, I would love for you to share it with your social media content um, if you have a social media account. Okay, so now, just want to kind of go over a few things with you guys. As most of you know, if you are subscribed to my channel and if you do read my community tab, um, you know that obviously the world is going through a chaotic, crazy season. And um, you've known that my, not my household, not my immediate family, but my extended family has been hit by this crazy virus. Um, my dad was diagnosed with it last week, Friday, and he is still in the hospital. He is doing fantastic, by the way. The virus is not um, in his system anymore, thanks be to God. Also, they are thinking that he also had like a mini stroke, and it caused him to not be able to move his body and all that. So they're still trying to find out if he has an infection because his levels are high and um, you know they're thinking that it's like a bacterial pneumonia type of infection and so they're working on trying to figure that out also the fever has been broken he has no symptoms by the way he had no symptoms so nobody knew that he was even you know that he even had the virus versus that he even had the virus. You understand what I'm saying? Because I'm still kind of like, I don't know the ins and outs of the hospital, but I'm still kind of like, he got there on Friday, they gave him a test, supposedly, and he, within that hour, they diagnosed him as positive. When in my mind, or my understanding, is that the test results normally takes three to five days. So, I don't know. I'm still kind of like, I don't know, but God sees and he knows everything. But I just wanted to kind of give you guys, I know that, you know, you guys have been praying and, you know, wishing us um, well and everything like that. So, I just kind of want to tell you guys how my dad's situation is going and how he's doing. He is doing phenomenally. Um, God is so good. His healing power, his healing virtue, his grace, mercy, love, compassion. I mean, I just, I, you know, I can't say enough 
about Jesus the Christ, the anointed one. I can't, it's, he's just, he's unexplainable. He's amazing. And just how he moves through circumstances and situations. And, and if you give him your circumstances and situation, he said to cast all your cares on me because I care for you. You know, bring me your burdens because I can bear it. Don't carry it. I can carry it for you. You know, and so it's like when you really, really take the time to really say, you know what, God, this is heavy for me. This is a lot for me. I need you to take this. And he actually does take it and you don't go back and pick it up. Everything works out for our good. And how he has moved in my dad's situation is not alarming to me. It's not surprising to me because I knew and believed that he would. But when he does it, I am in awe because it's incredible. It's absolutely incredible to see a man that was um, eight years ago had three brain aneurysms, two major strokes, a few larger strokes, um, was diagnosed with diabetes, diagnosed with high cholesterol, um, has got infected with this virus that is supposed to take out a person like him, and still recovers. Like, it's, it's amazing to me. It's absolutely amazing to me. And I'm telling you, once I get the opportunity to interview my dad, I am going to interview my dad. And I'm going to let you guys hear it from his mouth. Because it is mind-blowing. It's mind-blowing. How God does what he does. And I am just, I'm so grateful. I am so grateful because my dad is doing fantastic. My mom is doing fantastic. My family is doing fantastic. And even my best friend, she got diagnosed with it. And, it, you know, she was out for about a month um, with it. And she's still recovering. But how God has kept her and has healed her body, I mean, I just, I am blown away. They're talking about all these people that's affected and, you know, infected and all these hundreds of thousands of people, but, and I, I could be ignorant to it, but I'm not hearing anything about the people that are being recovered, you know, and I, I just, I'm just blown away by God's healing and his mercy, his grace, his love, because he is, he is healing people. He is delivering people from this virus. And if nobody else is putting it out there, I just want to put it out there. People are being healed. People are being recovered. Now, if you are not, if you're feeling sick or have the symptoms, please go to the hospital. Go get tested. Don't sit down and be like, oh, I'm good, I'm good. No, go to the hospital, go get tested, and make sure that you really are good, okay? Don't just sit there. Go and get tested and go get taken care of. But what I'm saying is, even if you are tested positive for this thing, right? God is so well able to heal a person's body because the, 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 the numbers are there. The miracle is there. People are testifying all over the world how God has healed them. How God sent nurses and, and you know, janitors to their rooms. To, to pray for them and to give them words of encouragement. I mean, I'm just, y'all, I'm just so blown away by his love. And people could say whatever they want to say. People could say, oh, you know, God is not real and all this stuff. You could say whatever you, if you're one of those people, you can say whatever you want to say. You have that right to say whatever you want to say. But I'm telling you, if you are not born again, if you are not a believer in Jesus Christ, if you are not born again, listen, there is a place for people that do not believe. There is a place for people that does not accept Jesus Christ. There is a place, and I don't even know why I'm going into this, but it's just, I'm just going as the Lord is leading me. There is a place, and that place is called hell. There is heaven and there is hell, okay? And I know this message might be crazy, but it is a much needed message. 
it is a timely message. And I'm not trying to give you this message. This I wasn't even coming on here to talk about this. You know what I mean? But if you feel like you can do this life on your own, by all means, go ahead. If you think that you woke up this morning on your own, continue to think that. But there is a being that is more powerful, that is bigger, that is greater. The earth is his footstool and his name is Jesus. And we cannot keep going around, you know, thinking that we are here by ourselves. Or, or thinking that, you know, we created ourselves. Or thinking that there's nobody higher than us. Jesus, he is higher than us. He is, he, if you need peace, he's the prince of peace. If you need joy, there's joy in him. If you need love, he is love. If you need strength, he is the source of strength. If you need light, he is the light of the world. Let me tell you, if you need guidance, he leads you. He walks with you. He talks to you. He takes you by the hand. And he directs your steps. And so, anything that you need, it's in him. And and I'm not going to, I'm. he is God Almighty. And I know there are different gods and people believe in different things. And that's okay. You have free will. You have the right to believe what you want to believe. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord Jesus. Okay? Because let me tell you, can nobody tell me that Jesus isn't real? Nobody. I've seen too much. I've experienced him in so many different ways. I've heard him speak to me personally. He's just... He is the light of my life. And I would invite you, okay? I, I just want to invite you to get to know him. Even if you think what I am saying is skepticism, get to know him. Get the Bible. It's not kryptonite, okay? Get the Bible. Read the Bible for yourself. Go to Revelations. And, and you will see for yourself the things that are happening now. It's in the book. It's in the Bible. It's it's. You know, ask somebody to help you that is filled with the Spirit so that they can have the understanding and translate it to you. Ask God to fill you with His Spirit. Ask Jesus to come into your life so that you can know and you can be filled up because it is the last days. It is, and I know people are just like, oh, my grandmother been telling me it's the last days for decades. Yeah, because it is. It is the last days, and everything is leading up to that. Everything is leading up to the coming, the second coming of Jesus. You don't believe it, that's on you, that's okay. But I believe it. And because I believe it, I want to tell millions of people, billions of people, whoever this will reach, I just want to tell you, Jesus is real, and the only way to the Father is through the Son, which is Jesus Christ, okay? And the only way that you're gonna get, get to, um, to see the Father, the only way that you're gonna get to heaven is by being born again. How can you be born again? By confessing with your mouth and believing in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord and being born again is washed in his blood by way of water baptism. Okay, and so I just want to urge anyone under the sound of my voice that is listening, if you don't have a relationship with him, today is your day. Today is your day to start a relationship with Jesus. And he will come with he will come and he will dwell with you if you just ask him he is waiting for you he waiting for you to open up your heart to him because he loves you he created you so why wouldn't he why wouldn't he want the best for you why wouldn't he want to see your life going in the right direction why wouldn't he want to see you succeed he created you he made you in his own image and so I just want to, I just want to just urge you, you know, today, don't wait for tomorrow because tomorrow is not promised. Today is the day to give your life to Jesus. And I am going to lead you through this prayer to receive Christ. And please, if you pray this prayer and if you've accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, please comment down below and let me know. It's very important that you let me know that you've done so. Because I want to help you to find yourself a Bible-believing church, or, you know, where you can go and get filled and built up on the Word of God. So please let me know down in the description box if you have, in fact, um, accepted Christ and or 
um, you, you know, repeated this, this prayer of salvation, okay? So I'm going to lead you guys to the prayer of salvation at the end of this video. But I just wanted to just give you guys um, the testimony. We are doing great, my family, my household, to God be the glory. We've been staying home, um, obeying the laws of the land. We have been staying home. I go out once a week to get groceries because, you know, my kids are home and they're growing and they're eating like adults. <laughs> they eat more than I do, honestly. Um, and so I would go to the grocery store once a week. But my kids have not been outside besides when we go to the backyard to play or go walking, in, you know, around in our cul-de-sac. Um, but we've, we've been staying home for the most part. And when I do go out, I have my, my mask on. And I am well covered up and well protected. Because I ain't playing no games, okay? You have to be smart. You've got to use wisdom. And you've got to adhere to the laws that, you know, is given. So that's what um, we've been doing. But we've been staying home. And we've been just doing a lot of homeschooling. And let me tell y'all, oh my gosh, this homeschooling situation. i got to drink some tea to that. Y'all, this homeschool situation, Lord have mercy, has been giving me the business, okay? It has been a trying time. It has been difficult, to say the least. When I say difficult, I don't mean that the work is difficult. Um, I just mean that the time, you know, and the amount of work. I spoke to one of my kids' teachers the other day, and I said to her, I said, it just seems like the kids are getting a lot more work at home than they ever did at school. And she said they are. They are getting a lot more work. She said they're getting at least three times the work than they had in school. And she, for her, she's just like, I'm just, I'm, I'm frustrated. Because we're giving all this work, and it's overwhelming for us, but it's also overwhelming for the kids. You know, so I have three kiddos, and each child is, is the work is, the load is different. I have a middle, two middle schoolers, and I have an elementary school um, child. And my elementary school child, the work is not that much, but, you know, she does get a lot of it. Um, and then my middle schooler, he has eight classes, and he is getting so much work per class. I mean, it's amazing. It's, it's, it's incredibly overwhelming. So they're up at... 8 o'clock in the morning, all the way to 2.30, 3 o'clock sometimes, still getting work done. Even sometimes at night, they're still getting work done. You know, and then the teachers, they'll be sending me stuff back and forth on the weekends, and I'm just like, they're not doing school on the weekends. Like, this is crazy. They already had to work through their spring break because I live in New York, and the governor, Cuomo, which is just nuts to me, he, you know, the kids had to work through their spring break. So they didn't have any spring break. So from time to time, I give them like a day off from school because it's just overwhelming. My, my elementary school, um, my elementary schooler, she the other day broke down. She was crying because the work was, it was overwhelming for her. And so I was just like, no, this is good. You take the day, relax, get your mind together because it's too much. For me as a parent, it's overwhelming. I sometimes, I can't get my work done um, because I'm working with them with schoolwork and I don't mind because my greatest pleasure is seeing my children succeed and so I'll do whatever I have to do to make sure that they get their work done and succeed at it versus me getting up and making a video as much as I love doing what I do and I love do what I do but my kids are my first priority my family are my first priority making videos is not my first priority. I'm extremely overwhelmingly exhausted by the end of the day. I'm t by seven o'clock, y'all, my eyes, like the little man is on my eyes just pulling them down. I'm just ready to go to sleep. I'm so tired. And I just, it's overwhelming. Then I have my third child. Um, she's actually my first child. She's the oldest. Uh, she has Down syndrome and her workload is not as hectic, but Doing physical therapy, speech therapy, and occupational therapy is not something that I do. It's not something that I do. And so, um, you know, learning how to do that with my daughter is, at first it was a little, ooh, oh my gosh. But then I kind of got the hang of it. So doing that with her daily 
and sending videos and sending pictures and you know all these things of her getting these things done and doing it and going on the Google class meets and all this stuff it has been ah! but to God be the glory because he strengthens me every day he graces me for it and I'm able to get up with my kids and whenever they need help I am able to render that help to them. And if I can't, I email the teachers, you know, and I'm just like, hey, they're having issues with this. What should we do? You know, so we're we're doing our part. The kids are in school every single day. Um, and, you know, they're eating, they're breathing. Everybody's healthy. Everybody is good. Mama is healthy. Daddy is healthy. And we're all doing what we what we can, we're all doing what we're supposed to do. We're staying home and we're staying safe. And we've been playing a lot of games and really just talking a lot and getting to know each other. I mean, I know my kids anyway. We've always had a close and tight-knit relationship. But just seeing them handling this whole situation, I am so proud of them. Because they have not let this thing affect them negatively, not one bit. And I'm so proud of them. I'm so proud of the kids that they are because it just shows me how much they are really trusting God and how much they are so built up in their faith that they're not shaken. And for me as a mama, that makes me feel so incredibly great to know that my babies are trusting God as, as much as I am. It just, it feels, it feels great. So that's why it's so important to, not just when it's a pandemic, but even before anything happens, to, to, to build yourself up on your most holy faith, to build your family up on the foundation of, of God, because when things happen, challenges come, you've you got to be able to withstand. The Bible said that when you've done all that you can, can do, when you've done all that the situation, you know, demands, stand. You've got to be able to stand. And so... We're standing on the word of God and we're leaning in him. We're running in him. And he is our rock. And so I just want to invite you to, to get to know him. I want to invite you to get to meet him. Also, let me know down in the description box how you guys are doing. How Not the description box, in the comment section. How are you guys doing? How are your families? How are your friends? How has this affected you? And how... Um, how are you coping? What are you doing to cope with the situation? You know, how has God helped you through this situation? Let me know down in the comment section because you know I love talking with you guys. I don't even know how long I've been on, but I just want to lead you to um, lead you in the prayer of salvation if you have not yet received Jesus as your Lord and Savior. So just repeat after me. Don't mind the noise, man. Daughter's in the kitchen making her a snack. Um, Hi. That's okay. <laughs> um, so just repeat after me. Lord Jesus, I come to you as humbly as I know. I am a sinner, and I want to be saved by your grace. Lord God, I know you are love, and I want to experience the love that everybody is talking about. I repent of all my sins, and I ask that you please forgive me. I ask that you come into my life and help me to walk this journey. Lord, I know I cannot do this on my own. I know that I need you and I want you. I want to learn your ways. I want to love like you love. I want to walk like you walk and talk like you talk. Lord Jesus, I ask that you come into my life. I believe with my heart and I confess with my mouth that you are the son of the living God. I believe, Lord, that you died for all my sins and you rose on the third day. I thank you, Lord God, for leading me and for guiding me. And I thank you for accepting me as your own. I thank you, Lord, that I am now your child and that you are my savior. Lord Jesus, I give you honor and I give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen. And just like that, if you prayed that prayer, you are now saved. I would love for you to find yourself a Bible-believing church that believes in God the Father, God the Son, Jesus Christ, and God the Holy Spirit. And 
if you can't find yourself a church, um, just just comment down below, and you know, I'll I'll help you as much as I can. My email address is shoshanabowens at gmail.com. You can email me um, if you need help with scripture or, you know, if whatever it is that you need help with, I will do my best to help you. But find yourself a Bible-believing church that will help to build you up in God's Word. That way you can withstand anything or anything that will try to come your way. Knowing that Jesus is with you is the most comforting thing on this earth because you're now with him eternally. So if anything happens, you now know Jesus the Savior and his blood is going to be covering you. So I just want to thank you guys so much for joining me today. If you accepted Christ today, congratulations. You are now a part of the family of God. And I just, I love you guys so much, and I appreciate y'all so much. And I just want to thank you guys so much for joining me today on Positive Vibes. Don't forget to join me next week. I don't even know what I'm going to be talking about yet, but I will be here next week, and I hope you will too. Thank you guys so much for watching. Again, subscribe, um, hit that bell, double tap it so that you will not miss an episode or any episodes that I upload on my channel. Give this video a thumbs up and share it with your loved ones, share it with your family. And hey, maybe one day you too can lead somebody to Christ. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next episode. Remember that Jesus is Lord, that Jesus loves you, and I love you too. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a fantabulous day. Yeah.